Happiness is here and now. I have dropped my worries. Nowhere to go, nothing to do. No longer in a hurry. Happiness is here and now. I have dropped my worries. Somewhere to go, something to do. But I don't need to hurry. It's so wonderful looking at you. I see that you've dropped all your worries. You really look happy. I'm not sure if we have time for more. Okay, let's sing one more song. There's a very simple song that's kind of also like a guided meditation. It's called In Out Deep Slow. It's like this. In out deep slow. Smile, release, present moment, wonderful moment. In, out, deep, slow, calm, ease. Smile, release, present moment, wonderful moment. Thank you so much for your sangha.
Sangha is invited to go back to our breathing so that the collective energy of mindfulness can bring us together as an organism flowing as a river with no more separation. Let the whole Sangha breathe as one body, chant as one body, listen as one body, transcending the frontiers of a delusive self, liberating ourselves from the inferiority complex, the superiority complex, and the equality complex. On the
taken it in, I'm aware of my body. My body is here. With the mouth, I smile and relax and release the tension in my body. peace in my body, there is peace in my feelings. Good morning dear friends, today is August uh, the 14th in the year 2010 and we are in Nottingham University for our retreat living mindfully, living peacefully. I was ordained as a novice monk the age of 16. And I have uh, enjoyed very much my life as uh, a Buddhist monk. 16. Now I'm 84. I have had a lot, lot of fun <laughs> uh, being a monk. I wanted to be a monk uh, very early in my life. At that time, I was uh, something like uh, 11. And one day I saw a, the drawing of a Buddha on the, the cover of a Buddhist magazine, black and white. The artist was so uh, so good. He painted. He 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 drew the Buddha beautifully, sitting on the grass, and the Buddha was very calm, smiling. And when I saw the drawing of the Buddha, I was impressed. I wanted to be like him sitting with calm happiness. And that is uh, the first time uh, the intention to become a monk uh, was born in me, thanks to that uh, artist who draw uh, the picture of the Buddha sitting on the grass. And I uh, had nourished that kind of uh, desire in me for several years before I asked my parents the permission to go to the temple and ordain as a monk. At first, they did not like the idea. But finally, I was able to convince them that, uh, well, I will have a lot of fun, happiness being a monk. So they allowed me. When I became, uh, when, uh, when, uh, bef before, before ordination, I had to, uh, to spend uh, several months as an aspirant so that the monks uh, know that I'm uh, good for monkhood. And, uh, The first book uh, they gave uh, to me to to learn is a book of uh, poems, short poems of four lines, called yata yata poems, verse. And these uh, poems are for the practice of mindfulness. When you brush your teeth, you need a poem in order to brush your teeth. You read the first line of the poem, and you breathe in. And you read uh, the second line of poem, and you breathe out. And when you have uh, finished, uh, mm, when you have finished uh, uh, the poem of four lines, you have a uh, breathing in and out uh, 
two times. And there is a poem for you to uh, put on your shirt, your robe. There is a poem for you when you uh, fresh water to wash your face. At my time, when I was ordained as a novice, there's no running water in the temple. There's no electricity. So as a novice, we went to the well and uh, took the water. And we uh, used a kerosene lamp in order to study and so on. So when you, when you uh, take the water to wash uh, your face, you have a poem. And while uh, washing your hand and your face, uh, the poem helps you to be concentrated, to be mindful. And when you drink your tea, you have a poem for drinking your tea. And when you go to the bathroom, <laughs> there's a poem for you to, to use when you urinate. In fact, uh, in the book, in the book, there were 51 poems, and I had to memorize them all in order to practice. There is a poem for you to use when you hear the bell, and I like that poem very much. It's also a poem for you when you, you sound the bell. You invite the bell to sound. Now, in the Buddhist tradition, we don't say hitting the bell or striking the bell. That sounds a little bit too violent. <laughs> so we say invite the bell to sound or sound the bell. At that time, when I was ordained as a monk, bicycle was still something very new in my country. Not many people had a bicycle. Not to say car, car is very rare. You may be interested to know that I am one of the first six monks to ride a bicycle in my country. <laughs> and I have invented a poem in order to ride my bicycle. So 51 become 52. <laughs> Later on, I invented one poem in order to use when I am to make a phone call. To make a telephone call, you need a poem also. Because the poem help you to be mindful and concentrated on what you are doing. And that is mindfulness. And later on, when I boarded an airplane, I thought that I should invent another poem. So there is a poem for boarding the plane. At my time, uh, all the poems were written in classical Chinese. So you have to learn classical Chinese in order to be able to practice. It's like uh, over here you learn uh, Greek or Latin. But now we have uh, modern Vietnamese versions of all the poems. And I have uh, translated all these poems into modern English for my friends to use. They are available in the Shantin book. If you like riding a bicycle, you are sure that there is a poem for you to use for riding a bicycle. This morning, I would like to uh, give you some uh, uh, recommendations so that you can use your bell. Because uh, practicing inviting the bell 
to sound, practicing listening to the bell is a very pleasant practice. And the children in Plum Village, they do it uh, very well. Children come from 50 or more countries to Plum Village, especially during the summer opening. And all of them learn how to invite the bell to sound, how to uh, listen to the bell. Because uh, listen to the bell like that will bring you a lot of peace, serenity, and joy. And I would like uh, to invite all the young people to learn today how to how to be a bell master. Thầy Pháp Niệm today is a, the bell, our bell master. The bell master is uh, responsible for inviting the bell for everyone to breathe in and out and feel peace and joy. And there are all kinds of bells, and this is uh, the smallest. They call it a mini bell. The mini bell has also a cushion to sit on. <coughs> and in the Buddhist tradition, we see the bell as a friend that helps us to be mindful and concentrated. So we show our sympathy and uh, respect to the bell. That is why before you invite the bell to sound, you bow to the bell as a friend. If you want to be a bell master, you should learn all these things. In the case you use uh, this small bell, you bow to the bell, smiling, and you may like to put the bell on the palm of your hand and hold it like this. And you may, you may see, you may visualize your hand as a flower. And in the heart of the flower, there is a shoe. Is a shoe. Or a lotus flower holding a shoe. Or Mani Padme Hum means, or the shoe, the shoe in the heart of a lotus. And you breathe in and out. Two times with the poem. The poem is. Uh, like this. Four lines. Body, speech, and mind in perfect oneness. Body, speech, and mind in perfect oneness. Body, speech, and mind together. And you read that while you breathe in. You bring your, um, your mind back to your body. The second line, I send my heart along with the sound of this bell. You breathe out. And then you breathe in again and you read the third line. My all of you who listen to me transcend, uh, overcome, get out of your um, forgetfulness. Forgetfulness means the opposite of mindfulness. And the last line, you read when you breathe out and transcend the path of sorrow and anxiety. And if you breathe in and out mindfully with this poem, you have peace and calm in yourself and you are qualified to be a bell master. Body, speech, and mind in perfect oneness. I send my heart along with the sound of this bell. May the hearers awaken from their forgetfulness and transcend the path of anxiety and sorrow. 
the Vietnamese version is shorter. Ba nghiệp lắng thanh tịnh, lưỡi lòng theo tiếng chuông, nguyện người nghe tỉnh thức vượt thoát nẻo đau buồn. It's very neat, only 20 words. So um, if you want to practice, and then uh, you might like to write down these four lines and memorize them. You can improve uh, the English. You can make it shorter. And then after you have uh, recited these uh, four lines, you recited uh, silently in your mind only. After you have recited uh, the poem and breathe in and out uh, two times, you are calm. You are more solid. You are free. You are free from thinking of this and that. You are concentrated on the bell and the poem. And the first thing you do is uh, to offer a half sound like this. That is a half sound. A full sound is different, but this is only a half sound. That half sound has the function, has the duty to, to warn people that a real sound, a full sound, is going to be heard. So that people will prepare themselves for the reception of the full sound. It means, dear friends, Please be aware that a full sound is going to be heard soon. Uh, it means like that. That is the meaning of the half sound. Because in this tradition, we, we, uh, we consider the sound of the bell to be the voice of the Buddha from within, calling us back to, our, to ourselves. Our mind may not be with our body, so we are calling our mind back to our body by listening to the bell. So when you hear, when the people around us hear the half sound, they know what it means. So they stop thinking. They stop talking. They stop thinking. They stop talking. And they ride on their in-breath in order to go home to themselves. That's what they do after they hear the half sound. And as a bell master, you should allow them enough time to do so. Maybe eight seconds for one in-breath and one out-breath. Usually, uh, the in-breath and out-breath of adult is a little bit longer so uh, you are kind enough to allow them enough time to enjoy the in-breath, the out-breath, and prepare themselves for the reception of the full sound. So uh, after having made uh, the half sound, you're breathing in, you breathe out, and you give them some extra seconds for them to enjoy fully their in-breath and out-breath. You are very kind. And then you offer the full sound. The full sound is like this. The full sound is for everyone, including you, Bellmaster, to enjoy breathing in and breathing out deeply 
three times. When you breathe in, you may like to say, I listen, I really listen. When you breathe out, you say, this wonderful sound brings me back to my true home. My true home is in the here and the now. Listen, I listen. This wonderful sound brings me back to my true home. I listen, I listen. This wonderful sound brings me back to my true home. And you enjoy breathing in, you enjoy breathing out. And peace and joy become a reality in your body. You are mindful, you are concentrated, you enjoy your in-breath, your out-breath. If you are a young person, you know that after you have finished your three in-breath and out-breath, maybe the adult are still doing the second uh, out-breath. So you allow them a little bit more time to fully enjoy their three in-breath and out-breath. So you give them four or five or six uh, more seconds. that uh, allowed understanding and compassion to be born in you because you want them to really enjoy deeply that, that three in-breath and out-breath. Because breathing like that can be very pleasant, very peaceful. And uh, after that, you invite, you offer the second full sound. I like to summarize on the board. You bow to the bell. You put the bell on the palm of your hand and you practice breathing in and out with the first breath. body, speech, and mind in perfect mindfulness, I send my heart along with the sound of the bell. May the hearers awaken from their forgetfulness and transcend the path of anxiety and sorrow. One in breath, one out breath, one in breath, one out breath. That is to prepare yourself to be ready as a bell master. And then you invite the half sun to tell people that a full sound is going to, to be heard. So that everyone has a chance to take one in breath and one raw breath to prepare themselves. They need the time to stop thinking and to stop talking and receive the, the sound fully. You know that you may, when you hear the, the sound of the bell, you might like to invite all the cells in your body to join you in listening, deep listening. The deeper you listen, the more peaceful you become. And then when everyone is ready, you invite the full sound. And after the full sound, there's three in-breath and out-breath. 
Listen, I listen, this wonderful sound brings me back to my true home. Listen, I listen, this wonderful sound brings me back to my true home three times. Before you invite the second full sound. And after that, everyone enjoy in breath, in breathing, our breathing three times. And finally, you invite the uh, the third full sound and with uh, three full in breath and out breath. <coughs> Remember, after, after, after you finish your third uh, out breath, allow them a little bit more time to fully enjoy their out breath, in breath. And then after you have finished, the third uh, out breath, you lower your bell and put it on a cushion again. <coughs> and you bow to it. The children in Plum Village, the children who have visited Plum Village, they like to get a bell home in order to practice. In the morning, before going off to school, they go to the breathing room. They, they sit down. They enjoy breathing in and out with three sounds of the bell. The three sounds of the bell, you have an opportunity to, to breathe in and out nine times. That's a lot. A lot of peace. And that is the best way to begin your day. You don't need to wish have a good day. You make the day good by practicing uh, listening to the bell. And uh, every evening before going to sleep, you might like to go to the breathing room and invite the bell three times and enjoy breathing nine, nine times. That is a practice of peace. And if uh, your brother, your sister, your parents join you in the practice, that is very beautiful. And I recommend that every home has a breathing room where you have some cushions to sit, one bell, and maybe one flower pot. It represents the meditation hall in your home. It does not have to be very big, the breathing room. And every time you get angry or upset, you go to the breathing room, you close the door, you invite the bell, and you listen. You have peace after that. So today, uh, the children will practice, train themselves to be bell masters, <laughs> and they uh, lend you this bell <laughs> to practice. When you hear this, uh, the sound of the small bell, you stand up and bow to the Sangha before you go out and practice. Children only. Enjoy your day.
my dear friends, uh, with a good practice, we can very well uh, release the tension in our body, reduce the pain in our body, recognize uh, the painful uh, feeling and emotions in us. We know how to embrace them. and uh, release the tension in our feelings, in our emotions, uh, bringing in a relief with a good practice. We can also uh, uh, create a feeling of joy and happiness Whenever, whenever we want. With uh, a good practice, we are no longer afraid of uh, obstacles and difficulties. We know how to uh, cope with the difficulties, with the suffering that uh, arise. And that is why um, coming to a retreat, we have an opportunity to consolidate our practice with a practice uh, that is solid. There's no reason we have to be fearful anymore. That you have seen the path and you know how to handle your body, your feelings, your perceptions. And then there's no need to, to be to, to worry anymore. And uh, it is possible to continue uh, improving the quality of our practice. Uh, by being in touch with a Sangha. A Sangha is uh, a community of practitioners that uh, is able to generate uh, a collective uh, energy of mindfulness and concentration. And that help us uh, in the beginning a lot in the beginning. As a beginner in the practice, our mindfulness and concentration might not be strong enough for us to recognize and embrace our pain, our sorrow, our fear. So with a Sangha, we have a chance We come to the Sangha, we sit among brothers and sisters who are practitioners, and we say, and we say, dear friends, this is my pain, my despair, my anger. It's a little bit too much for me. And my mindfulness and concentration is not powerful enough to to hold, to hold them. So please help, help uh, hold this uh, block of pain and sorrow and fear in me. So allow, we allow the Sangha to embrace us, to transport us with her collective, powerful collective energy of mindfulness and concentration. And suddenly we feel that we are able to be with our pain, to embrace our pain and sorrow. And while sitting with the Sangha like that, practicing mindful breathing and in and out, we bring a relief and we begin to transform and heal. That is why the presence of a Sangha in our life as a practitioner is very important. 
And therefore, as a practitioner, we always think of helping to build a Sangha in our neighborhood where you where we live. In the Buddhist tradition, uh, we call it uh, our Dharma body, our practice. We have our physical body. But if we have a good practice, spiritual practice, we have another body called Dharma body. With the Dharma body, we'll be able to cope with difficulties, suffering, and so on. And we can help other people if we have a strong uh, Dharma body. Dharma may be uh, understood as uh, the Buddhist teaching. There is the spoken Dharma, there is the written Dharma. But there is also the living Dharma. When we practice mindful breathing, we don't say anything, we don't listen to anything. Or when we practice a walking meditation, we don't say anything, we don't listen to any Dhamma talk. And yet, we are generating the living Dharma. When you see a brother or a sister who walk mindfully and enjoy every step, You see that uh, she is uh, generating the living Dharma, radiating peace and joy and life around. And that is what we call uh, the living Dharma. When you sit and enjoy breathing in and out and feel the solidity and the freedom and the joy, uh, you are helping the living Dharma to manifest. And that living Dharma can penetrate into other people and help improve the quality of life of uh, the world. And uh, the presence of the living Dharma can relieve suffering, and bring uh, happiness and joy. And our, our Dharma body, our practice, has the capacity to generate the living Dharma. When you brush your teeth, when you drive your car, when you water your vegetable garden in mindfulness, you generate the living Dharma generate the energy of the living Dharma. It heals yourself, it heals the world. And that is why to have a good practice is very important. We have a physical body, but we have a Dharma body. The Dharma body might be nourished also by the Sangha body. If we belong to a group of practitioners, if we belong to a Sangha, whether that is the Heart of London Sangha (laughs) or any Sangha, we have uh, our third body, Sangha body. The Sangha body looks like it is outside of us, but in fact it is inside. Uh, Wherever we go, we can bring the Sangha body with us. And uh, we know that uh, the Sangha 
always uh, generate the collective energy of mindfulness and concentration and insight supporting us in our practice. So each practitioner should uh, belong to a Sangha, should have a Sangha body. You have the physical body, a Dharma body, the Sangha body. But there is another body that we have, that is the Buddha body. We have a Buddha body inside. We know that uh, there is a seed of uh, awakening. There is a seed of uh, understanding and compassion in us. And if you know how to touch these seeds, if you know how to water every day the seed of uh, understanding, compassion, awakening, we are helping the Buddha body in us to grow. So the Dharma, Dharma body, the Sangha body, is helping the Buddha body in us to manifest and to grow. It is not an abstract idea. There is a, a Buddha within each of us. There is our Buddhahood, Buddha nature. And we can give the Buddha in us a chance to manifest. If we have a Dharma body, a Sangha body, and then the Buddha body in us will have a chance to grow. And uh, that is why the safest place, the surest place to find a Buddha is not in a temple, but uh, in ourselves. Our uh, Dharma body is like uh, our life uh, rest. Uh, if you know how to uh, to uh, if you if we know how to bring our uh, Dharma body with us everywhere we go, if we have a good. Uh, Dharma practice, and then uh, we know that uh, in moments of dangers, in moments of difficulties, we always have a way out. And uh, we remember to make use of our practice in order to get out of uh, a, a difficult situation. And we can use our practice in order to help another person to get out of his or her own difficult situation. So it's uh, wonderful to have uh, a strong, uh, a good practice with us, a good Dharma body. When we practice uh, walking meditation, we make use of our uh, in-breath and out-breath and our feet. Walking meditation is uh, 
a very wonderful way to learn how to live uh, deeply every moment of our daily life. There is no way to happiness. Happiness is the way. There is no way to peace. Peace is the way. And life is like a walk. And uh, a walk is made of uh, steps. And each step we make should uh, bring us uh, joy, peace, and happiness. And walking meditation is uh, to arrive at the destination of peace and joy and happiness with every step. Peace is every step. Joy is every step. Happiness is every step. So that is uh, a deep practice. We walk in such a way that Every step can bring joy and peace and happiness. And we arrive at every, with every step. The most profound and uh, the shortest Dharma talk is, uh, I have arrived, I am home. We know that the past is already gone. The future is not yet there. There is only one moment when we can be truly alive, that is the present moment. So every step should bring us back to the present moment. And it is in that moment that we can get in touch with uh, the wonders of life that are available. In the Buddhist tradition, we speak of uh, the Buddha land, the pure land of the Buddha. In Christianity, we speak of the kingdom of God. God and the kingdom of God. In the light of uh, the Buddhist uh, teaching and practice, God and the kingdom of God are available only in the here and the now. So in walking meditation, we walk in such a way that make the kingdom of God available with every step. Because uh, according to the teaching and practice, the kingdom is now or never. So it's the way that you make the step to determine whether the kingdom is there for you or not. And walking like that, we should walk with uh, mindfulness and concentration. And the energy of mindfulness and concentration is like the key to unlock the kingdom of God. And with only one step full of uh, mindfulness and concentration that you can step into the kingdom. Look at this flower, at this flower. If we have enough time to look uh, into the flower deeply, we will see that uh, she belongs to the kingdom of God, to the pure land of the Buddha. Where else should she belong to? That is an ambassador of the kingdom. That is part of the kingdom. And it is available here and now. 
but we don't have the time to get in touch. And, uh, and in the present moment, there are wonders of life, like uh, the sunshine, the beautiful hills and trees, the songs of the bird. They all belong to the kingdom. And each of us also, we belong to the kingdom. The children belong to the kingdom, and we belong to the kingdom also. There is a tendency to run in every one of us. We believe that happiness and peace and joy and the kingdom are not possible now. We have to look for our happiness and peace and joy elsewhere in the future. And that is a kind of uh, collective uh, tendency, collective belief. In fact, if we are back, to, really back to the present moment, if we know how to establish ourselves in the present moment, we realize that uh, conditions of happiness are plenty already there. And the kingdom of God is already available there. You don't need to die in order to go to the kingdom. In fact, you have to be very alive to get in touch with the kingdom. And with what makes you alive is mindfulness and concentration. Mindfulness is the kind of energy that allows us to know what is going on. Mindfulness tells us that the flower is there that we are breathing in, that we are making a step. Mindfulness is always mindfulness of something. Mindfulness of the presence of uh, the flower, mindfulness of the presence of all wonders of light that are available in the here and the now. Mindfulness is mindfulness of the in-breath that we are taking. Mindfulness uh, is mindfulness of the step that we are making. And with uh, mindfulness, concentration is born. When you are mindful, very mindful of something, you are concentrated on it. And mindfulness and concentration allow us to have the insight. The insight is that happiness is already there. The kingdom is already there. You don't have to run anymore and look for them elsewhere and in the future. And uh, the practice is to generate the energy of mindfulness, concentration, and insight. And that allowed us to be there and to get in touch with the wonders of life. And we are our body, our mind, our wonders of life also. But uh, mindfulness and concentration and insight help us to stop the running. The habit of uh, running is very strong in every one of us. Maybe that habit has been transmitted to us by many generations of ancestors. We sacrifice the present moment for the sake of the future. We believe that happiness is not possible in the here and the now. And now with the practice, you can learn to change the habit. You should get the habit of being there in the present moment. In fact, the teaching of the Buddha is uh, it is possible to live happily in the present moment. Drista, Dharma, Sukha, Vihara, living happily in the present moment is possible. In fact, when we are back to the present moment, we get the insight that uh, conditions 
of happiness are plenty already, more than enough, and happiness can can be right there. With uh, this practice, you will get the insight that God is not uh, outside of us and in the future. God is inside and now. And His kingdom is not something outside in the future. We have to look for. It is right there in the here and the now and inside of us. So walking meditation is the practice of uh, of enjoying the kingdom in the here and the now with the awareness that the kingdom is now or never. And if we are capable of doing so, That's thanks to the energy of mindfulness and concentration. If we speak uh, with the language of Christianity, and then mindfulness, concentration, and insight is uh, the Holy Spirit, the energy of God. With that energy, you are able to stop and to be with the kingdom right here, right now. When we have uh, 5, 10, 15 minutes, we might like to try uh, slow walking alone. Walking with the Sangha, we have to to, to flow with the Sangha. Uh, breathing in, you make two or three steps. Breathing out, you make three or four steps. You flow like a river. But when you are alone, you might try real, really slow walking. Take one in breath and make one step only. Bring your mind, put your mind at the sole of your foot and touch the ground mindfully. Don't let your mind here bring it down to the sole of your foot. And suddenly you say, I arrived. I have arrived. I have arrived is not a declaration. A oral declaration. It is a realization. During the time of breathing in and making a step, we should truly arrive in the here and the now. Because the here and the now is the address of uh, the kingdom of God, the pure land of the Buddha. And if we don't have enough uh, mindfulness and concentration, we cannot really arrive at 100%. We have to invest our body our, and, and our mind, 100% of our body and mind, in order to, to be able to arrive 100% in the here and the now. That is a challenge. You may arrive only 20%, but that's not enough. And you know that you have not fully arrived. You have arrived only 20, 30 percent because your mindfulness, your concentration is not strong enough. So stay there. Don't make another step. Continue to breathe in and out until 
you truly arrive at 100%. You have the time to do so. No, no one is pushing you behind. You are practicing alone. You can stay in that position and breathe in and out mindfully with concentration until you arrive. And your feet is like a printing the seal arrival on the ground, full arrival. And when you have uh, the impression the inside that you have fully arrived, smile. That is a victory. And then breathe out and make up another step. And the ground bear the sign of arrival. I have arrived. I am home. And the sign of arrival is there in your footstep. The sign of home is there in your footstep. And if you have succeeded one time, you know that you can do it again. And walking like that make the kingdom of God available right away. And when we walk together as a group, The collective energy of mindfulness and concentration can be very powerful. We combine our energy. And if you allow the Sangha to transport you, you can go like a river. And it's so easy, so pleasant to walk. So the practice of mindful walking can be described as a walk in the kingdom of God. And every step is healing. Every step is nourishing. And there are those of us who heal ourselves just by the practice of walking. Every step is a miracle. Every step is nourishing. Every step is healing. The Zen master uh, Lin Chi Lin Chi said that the miracle is not to walk on thin air or on uh, fire. The miracle is to walk on earth. To be alive and to be walking on this planet is a miracle. And we can perform that miracle at any time you want. Imagine you are an astronaut and you sp have spent uh, two months up there in the sky and you miss home, you miss the planet. Now you have landed back to the planet, and you see the grass, the trees, you hear the sound of the creek, and you enjoy so much. You enjoy walking on a small path, and each, each, uh, each step brings you happiness and joy. And you see that uh, the kingdom your home is really there for you. And that is thanks to mindfulness and concentration. Therefore, we say that mindfulness and concentration is a source of happiness and peace. When uh, we concentrate on our breathing and our steps, we release the past. The past is no longer a prison for us. There are those of us who cannot get out of the prison of the past, who are not capable of living in the present. We have to try to help them with our practice. 
and there are those of us who always think of the future. They worry so much about the future. They are very fearful about the future. They do not have a chance to and capacity to live the present moment. And we have, uh, we can help them with our practice. We can invite them back to the here and now and enjoy. In fact, there is a fear in us. That is why we do not have the capacity to enjoy it in the here and the now. We long for something. We are afraid of something will happen. have uh, borrowed too much from ourselves. We treat our, uh, our physical labor for the things we think that are uh, essential to our uh, happiness and uh, security. This planet belongs to our children. We have uh, borrowed this planet from our children. We have caused a lot of damage to our planet. We don't know whether we can give it back to our children the way we want. But uh, who are they? They are our children. They are our continuation. They are us. It means we have borrowed from ourselves. We have borrowed and not much is left in ourselves. That is the present situation. With the practice, we can do otherwise with the practice of mindfulness going home to the present moment we know that there are so many wonders of life there are many conditions of happiness that are available we don't need to borrow anymore the planet cannot take it anymore our children cannot take it anymore we cannot take it anymore stop borrowing because uh, we don't need. When we go back to our body, to our mind, to the present moment, we see that uh, there are still conditions of happiness available. And if we know how to get in touch with them, yeah, we can be happy, satisfied, fulfilled, right here and right now. This is the teaching of the Buddha, the practice recommended by the Buddha, living happily in the present moment. When you go for a vacation, when you go for a retreat, a picnic, you might use a tent. You can live uh, 10 days, 20 days in a tent. You have to go and fetch water and it's not as comfortable as your home. But you are very happy living in a tent and living in a retreat. You don't suffer at all. And yet you know at home you are more comfortable. The running water, everything. So it is the fear in us that prevents us to be happy we can very well live a simple life and happily also. There is the sto story of uh, Bhadya in the family of uh, Shakyamuni, 
who became a monk. One year after enlightenment, the Buddha went home and visited. And so many young people wanted to join him in monastic life, including uh, young people in his uh, royal family. And Bhadja was one of them. He had been a governor, very rich, before he left everything in order to join Siddhartha, to join uh, the Buddha as a monk. He was ordained with five other people. And uh, the third or the fourth week of his, after his ordination, one day he was uh, practicing meditation in the wood late at night. And suddenly he pronounced the word, Oh my happiness, oh my happiness. Two times. And another monk uh, sitting close by was very surprised. And he thought that uh, Badia was uh, regretting his life as a governor. He thought that uh, uh, after having become a monk, he regret his position as uh, a governor, very rich, very powerful. And that is why he went to the Buddha and reported, Dear teacher, last night I hear Badia pronounce two times the word, uh, oh happiness, oh my happiness. I think he's uh, regretting uh, 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 that ha he has uh, ordained as a monk. The Buddha did not believe it, but he summoned Badia and other monks. And in the presence of many monks, he asked Badia, is it true that last night uh, during sitting meditation, you pronounced two times, uh, oh my happiness, oh my happiness. And Badia said, yes, teacher, I did pronounce two times. The word, oh my happiness, oh my happiness. The Buddha said, explain, please explain why you did so. And Badia said that, uh, teacher, dear friends, when I was uh, a lay person, I was very powerful. I was very rich, but I always li live in fear. I was very afraid that someone will come and kill me and took my belongings. So I always had many soldiers guarding inside the house and around. I could not sleep well. Someone may try to uh, take my place. Someone may try to assassinate me and steal from me. So I live in constant fear. Although I was powerful, rich, but I was not happy. But last night, sitting in a wood, I feel I have nothing to lose. I am so free, so light. I feel that uh, the life, uh, this simple life, suit me wonderfully, and in that state of being happiness, of happiness, I utter the word, "Oh my happiness, oh my happiness." And he, and uh, everyone understood. Many of us are afraid that we cannot continue with the living style that we are having because of the economic crisis. And that fear is an obstacle. That fear does not allow us to live happily. The fact is that uh, Bhatia found that the life of, his, of a monk, very simple like that, can be a very happy life a lot of freedom, a lot of brotherhood, understanding, and compassion. And that is why uh, the problem is not 
whether it can recover from the economic crisis. We can do something in order to, to change uh, the economic situation. The problem is uh, how to deal with our fear. And uh, if we can remove that fear, and then uh, happiness will be possible right away. Even if we have to live more, a little bit more simply. And uh, only when you liberate yourself from that fear, you can truly come home to the here and the now and enjoy yourself, enjoy life, enjoy the kingdom of God that is available. And walking meditation is one of the ways to taste the kingdom, to taste the here and the now deeply.
take our seats again for some short announcements. The first thing I have on this uh, list is for those that missed the orientation last night, uh, there is a, another orientation that we will offer in the Dharma Hall 2 at 3 o'clock this afternoon. So those of you who missed orientation, please go, go to Dharma Hall 2. It's just out there. See it's signed in this building. Um, for those of you Rutland House uh, who were in Dharma Hall 2 this morning, I want to offer the apology for the lack of sound. Um, there was a communication problem within the EMCC and that they offer their apology and it won't happen again. So, thank you. Um, As an announcement for those that were invited to share on the five mindfulness trainings panel. So that would be five people in this hall if they could meet also at three o'clock in the Coatsworth room, uh, JCR. That's the first room on the left as you go into Rutland Hall, as if you were going to the dining hall. But, but you go first room on the left, it's in there. And that's three o'clock. Coatsworth room. And for the young adults group, um, you have been designated as a group A, and that means that you will meet at 4 p.m. for Dharma discussion. You're invited to meet at the library of Sherwood Hall, which uh, connects with the, the next announcement about the Dharma discussion groups. Um, they will now be They will now be uh, posted in your halls of residence, also conference suite one, which is where some of you registered. If you are coming into the conference suite, this building, on your, you turn right into the building and immediately right, that's conference suite one. You can find your Dharma discussion group where each group you are in, posted up there also in the halls of your residence. And you will also take notice, uh, apart from, as I said yesterday evening, to be sure about your location so you can find it easily. Also, take note of which group you are, group A or group B. If you're group A, it means you, for today, you will have your Dharma discussion uh, at 4 p.m. In the, and you will have a total relaxation with Sister Chen Kong in the evening session in this hall at 7.30. And uh, if your group B is the other way around, you have the total relaxation at 4 with Sister Chen Kong and the Dharma discussion at 7.30. And just to, I also announced last night, but just to remind you of the yellow sheets that you have, that it's 3 to 3.30, 3 to 3.45 for that um, session this afternoon with Sister Gina, uh, which will be in this hall on sitting posture. It'll be a wonderful sharing on uh, cultivating our sitting practice. And that's in this hall, 3 o'clock, 3 to 3.45. And for all those 3 o'clock slots, it's 3 to 3.45. And then Dharma discussion is actually begins at 4 o'clock, not 3.45 as it says on the schedule. Um, there is also, uh, yeah, I wanted to uh, mention about the, the online, as you heard yesterday, uh, London talk and also all of the talks of uh, this retreat will be uh, live online, available via the Plum Village website. There is a link or Ty's Facebook page. And... Uh, 
you don't have to be a subscriber to Facebook to find the link on there either. But if you have uh, loved ones, friends that would have liked to have come to the this retreat or you think would enjoy, uh, yeah, there are some. There is free internet service in the hall, uh, or you can telephone and let them know about that. And then for so you'll notice on the the schedule the three 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 forty five slot there is uh, consultations are offered the this afternoon in that slot as I mentioned a sitting posture practice. There is a group uh, a group consultation tomorrow at that slot, and that just to explain is to people with a similar concern that they would like to have. Maybe ordinarily they would have asked for a private consultation, but we often find that many people have the same concern. They want to speak to a monk or a nun or a, an experienced practitioner about their particular issue, and one of the issues that often arises uh, that is um, prescient for people is they have a, an issue with grief and uh, Sister Annabelle for instance will be offering a group consultation on that tomorrow and then there will also be conflict in relationships is another theme and another theme is mind bringing mindfulness into the family with children and in schools so we'll say more a bit about those themes uh, tomorrow, but just to, to let you know. But also in the meantime, and parallel with that, we have individual consultations we will make available where you have an individual uh, sit down for half an hour with a, a brother, a sister, uh, experienced practitioner, lay friend, and for this, we would invite you to fill out uh, this little form and with your question, but you can make you can make the, the the question doesn't have to be too detailed just to know the theme. So, like I said, for perhaps you have an issue with anger or anxiety or stress. It could be that simple. You just put, if you can, or or grief or whatever. But as I say, there are some, for grief or conflicts in relationship, we're also offering this group consultation. You might not need to to get the one-on-one. -on -one. So this is for the one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. And then what will happen is you will go to the boards that are uh, the um, whiteboards that are just outside Conference Suite 1. Um, and Sister Downyam, who just came up, she is going to make a matrix to match up people's needs with a brother and sister to and then you will you will meet at that um, point you you keep checking the board to see what your time is and who the brother sister or uh, friend is that's going to offer you the consultation and then when you see that the time that's where you'll meet at that time with that brother or sister and then you go you find yourselves uh, cozy corner to go and sit and have your half hour. So that's that's the idea. And the times will not necessarily be in that three o'clock um, slot. They could be other times. So you take a check. No, I, I haven't gotten uh, but I just haven't gotten them yet. Want to make yeah. Yeah, Sangha. Um, I would like to meet this afternoon at 3 o'clock. All those who are going to uh, receive the 14 mindfulness trainings and the ceremony on Monday. And you already know who you are, and I don't know who you are. Um, yeah, I'm afraid the uh, organization team haven't given me a place, so I don't know where we're going to meet. We're going to meet in conference room 2 at 3 o'clock. Thank you very much.